All right, what's up, guys? Um, thought it would be a, a good idea to do a uh, a podcast. So, with that being said, <laughs> next to me, I've got to I've got uh, Blake. Blake, you've been uh, the man behind the camera this year. It's been a lot of fun having you. You've been uh, kicking butt. You've actually become quite the little rider as well. It's amazing <laughs> what happens when you go ride a bunch, huh? Yeah, six days a week. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, as you can see uh, next to me, we uh, also have Kyle Pulsifer. Actually, we don't. Um, <laughs> I'm just wanting to use this soundboard. Um, and so we don't have Kyle. Kyle was um, up at Afton doing the hill climb. Um, Kyle, how did that go? Oh my god, I'm like being really funny right now. <laughs> um, actually, no, uh, the hill was nasty. Um, Kyle did end up taking fourth in nine improve, which is awesome. Learned a lot, uh, the, and uh, we'll talk to him about that um, at a later date. But uh, what we want to talk about, guys, uh, for this podcast is uh, the new exciting news from Polaris. Uh, the Model 23 release uh, went down um, this week. And, of course, uh, finally, I get to talk about, uh, dude, we have a 900 big bore short tunneled matrix slash snowmobile. Thing's pretty cool. That um, you can go buy. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's well, crazy. actually, they're sold out already. But <laughs> um, a lot of you went and uh, snow checked one. And so um, obviously with a new product comes a lot of excitement and a lot of questions. And so what we wanted to do uh, with this podcast is just, uh, um, Blake, you got to uh, shoot your first uh, reveal video, sweet. right? Which yeah, was pretty was fun. Awesome. Todd Williams, uh, he came down and shot photo for Polaris. Uh, Todd and I have been doing these early release um, video slash content um, for, well, since, since I came to players, uh, all the way back in, uh, 2010. So it was cool to have Todd back down here. Cool for you to shoot with him. And then, you know, really trying to capture that excitement of, um, what, you know, we all, even when I was a kid, right? Like what, what's, what's coming, what's new, what's, what's the new, uh, the new eye candy. And, and so that, that's, I, I never, I never take that for granted, and I love uh, every opportunity I get to um, to not only ride the new sleds but showcase it and, and show all of you guys. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so what we're gonna do? Uh, we had a lot of uh, comments and questions uh, with our our release video, and so Blake, uh, you, I'm gonna have you just roll down and start start talking about or uh, asking some questions, and then I'll give you guys my my best feedback I can um, and we'll, we'll chat. So let's, let's start with one. Perfect. So yeah, based off of Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, these are the questions that got asked a lot. Um, is there a big bore and a turbo in the future? So are they going to do the 900 and a turbo? <laughs> <laughs> um, what if I already have one? Well, Maybe. Nobody really knows. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. I do have one. I do have a 900 boost. Um, I got a Carl's 900 with a boost buggy. Um, haven't talked about it much this year because um, I got a little plan for it. So we'll be shooting some content on it. I'm actually going to ride it today. So, um, you know, here's... I, I think that's a great question, right? Um, you know, we, we got introduced to the 850 boost last year, and now we've got a, a 900 big bore. Um, I, I mean, it's it's really cool to see the direction that Polaris is going. Um, and I talked about it in my initial post launching uh, the, the new 23 900 is that, you know, the reason I work with Polaris is because they listen to what us mountain guys want. Um, and um, so to answer that question, is there going to be a 900 boost? I don't know. You'll just have to wait and see. Um, I know I'm going to ride one today. Uh, it's not a factory one, but uh, it's something that we've put together and uh, I've ridden it. It's an absolute rocket ship. It's way more than anybody needs. The eight, the, the current 850 boost is way more than anybody needs. Um, but that's 
that's pretty awesome, right? As we are no longer limited by the machine. Now we're limited by our skill set. So um, that's, a, that's a great question. And uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, huh? <laughs> so the next one we got is, uh, is it a Dragon 900? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course. And, and we knew this was going to come. And, and, you know, I think Polaris has done a, a really good job on the branding side of things, you know, calling a boost a boost, not not a, a, a turbo. And, and really, you know, making, making um, their – just their own identity. And I think that's no different in the 9R. Um, you know, the 9R is, um, do, do you think it would be a great plan for them uh, to, you know, to obviously everyone remembers the 05 900. Um, I actually rode an 06 no check uh, 900. A, um, I was doing the M7 tour then and a guy shows up on one and I'm like, dude, give me that thing. Let me go ride this thing. And I rode, I'm like, Dang, this thing actually runs pretty good. Um, obviously, they had some troubles with it. Um, I would say since 06, uh, things have changed quite a bit in uh, in Polaris land. And, you know, the the 850 has just been, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, just big advancements in the power delivery, uh, the, the way it rides. Um, I'm I am a jerk to snowmobiles, like really mean to snowmobiles. And you know this 900 we've been running since I've been running since 2019. Um, and so um, you know the this 900 is something that people are going to really dig. Um, and so yes, is it an L5 900? No. Uh, it's quite a bit better than that. Uh, from a durability standpoint, I promise you that's something that Polaris, it's their number It's their number one target and their number one goal um, from a longevity standpoint. And, um, you know, these snowmobiles are ridiculously expensive. Um, and it's because, you know, they're doing everything they can from a technology standpoint to make them as powerful, as light, and reliable as possible. So um, I'm excited for you guys to... Uh, to be welcomed to the air of big bores, man. Uh, and big bores that you can buy from the factory with a warranty. So this leading into that, this is probably the biggest question that we get, right? So 900 or boost. boost. Yeah. What are, you, what are you going with <clears throat> and why? <laughs> yeah. And this, this question we're going to spend a lot of time on. Um, and, that was probably one of the number one comment, right? Is um, okay. The it's great that you guys have a nine hundred, but what what are you, what are you riding? And I man, I get that question so much. What should I get? A nine hundred or a boost? I'm like, dude, I am not you, and um, I am not going to make the decision for you. You need to make your own decision and figure out um, basically, you know what what sled meets your agenda, and so. I've been thinking about how to answer this and, and I, um, I had a thought process the other day that I'm like, you know what, this makes a lot of sense. And so for all you dirt bikers out there, and I, and I know we have a, a ton of, of, of crossover, uh, from dirt bike world over to snowmobile world. Um, this is how I compare like both the 850 and 900, um, versus the boost. Okay. So again, it's all about picking the right wet, the right tool for the for the job. Okay, um, so here's how I look at that: is in the dirt bike world, a 450 is the top of the line. It's it's one of those machines again that literally not one single person who goes to the showroom floor can outride a 450. Myself mm -hmm. included. <laughs> oh, myself included, like <laughs> times ten. Okay, um, and I'm an okay dirt bike rider, and and that's you know. That's how far and advanced a 450 has come. And that is no different than what a, a boost sl sled is. You go buy a boost sled and it is 1 million horsepower. It does things that like you can't do. And that's awesome, right? Um, it's, it's, and so that is what um, that I liken that, that comparison to, okay? Um, and there are specific... 
um, applications where that 450 is the king, oh, yeah. right? Like, um, you know, super cross and, and outdoor tracks and the dunes and, you know, hill climbs and more, you know, more open stuff. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. But as, so, so there was this big push and this big trend for everyone buying 450s. Yep. Okay. And, and then it actually, it started going the other way, yeah, right? 350s and three, yeah, yeah. 350, 350 yep. was a cool bike. And then, and then the resurgence of the two stroke came back. Yep. Right. And so now, um, y- you know, the 300 is the absolute a pit a pit two stroke three three hundred two stroke yeah. fuel injector you're right it's like it, it is the go to bike for hard enduro single track like it's light it's quick it's easy to ride it's all it's all of that right yep. that is how I compare the nine eight fifty slash nine hundred to a boost sled right like can I go do a gnarly single track on a four fifty yes. At the end of the day, I feel like I've been like just put through the ringer, <laughs> yep. right? And in that real gnarly technical terrain, ups and downs and all steeps and, and all that stuff, like that's what I feel like at the end of the day riding the boost sled is I'm like, dude, that thing went up some stuff, but holy cow, like holding on to the power, holding on to the extra weight, going downhill, you know, all of that stuff. Like it, I did it, but like, I would have preferred to have the right tool for the right job in, on that particular day. Yep. And so, you know, that, so we circle back to the question, which, which sled should I get? Well, what kind of terrain do you like? You know, if you like that more open stuff I, and, and here's the stuff, I like trees. Okay, cool. There's a, there's a lot of different variances of tree riding, right? There's more space trees. There's, uh, you know, shoots and, and, climbs through trees and there's well, you, don't, I, you don't just like trees you like trees that like you have maybe an inch on each ski to get through the tree <laughs> shitville <laughs> yeah i like shitville yeah narville shitville yeah it's kind of the same thing oh now i did get asked uh, what's the difference between narville and shitville <laughs> um <laughs> there is over. <laughs> there is a difference yeah um but so again like the you the reason you guys have seen me trending um that direction pretty much since 2019, um, you know, with big bores and lightweight and all that stuff is I, for my riding style and where I ride, I thoroughly enjoy going into the deepest, darkest, nastiest, tightest, steepest place that I can go to because that's what provides me a challenge and what, you know, keeps me driven to keep enjoying this sport, right? And that, wasn't like that five years ago. Five years ago, I'm like, why are you guys riding stock snowmobiles without a turbo? What is wrong with everybody? Right. Well, the way I <laughs> rode, like I was addicted to the power. I was able to access these places I've never ridden before because of the power, right? Right. right. And so once that, like, so then I got to a place in my riding um, where I'm like, okay. This has been fun, but man, I am tired of feeling like I just got put through the ringer every day. And man, I find like this more steeper technical stuff. It's really nice to have something that I can literally hold wide open and not just feel like I'm getting that the sled's riding me instead of me riding the sled. And that's where I found in this more technical stuff, it was amazing that I could actually go even more places on a stock sled versus my turbo because things were happening just a little bit slower and I had more control and I could carry more momentum. And so that, you know, then, so now then we're big, boring, big, boring and lightweight and all this stuff. And so, you know, then it started trending this other direction. And so, um, Again, I've spent a lot of time on this conversation, but, you know, again, you need to ask yourself, what is the best tool for your agenda? Okay. If you are one of those people who just loves just going out on the deep pow day, dude, go buy a boost and do wheelies everywhere and make all your buddies look silly. Like that's, that is without question. That's what you should do. Um, 
for you guys who uh, love, you know, pushing your riding and getting into that more technical stuff, it is really tough to beat an 850 or 900. Um, you know, again, that no matter what sled you buy, it's more capable than the rider. And that's what's awesome is you can really just, we're getting just more options to make sure you pick the right machine for you. Um, also, let me talk about one more thing is, um, uh, cause I saw a couple, couple comments, uh, referencing this as well for all you guys at the low elevation, you know, the riding like chick chocks and, and, in Maine and, and then, or the UP, uh, dude, the 900 is like, it is the dream sled, right? It's lighter. It's quicker response. You have tons of power down there. Um, the BC guys that six to eight dude. A 900 is going to be unreal down there. Again, lots of power, lots of response. It isn't going to be a turbo um, on those deep days. There's nothing that replaces horsepower and track speed on the deep days. Um, but, you know, for the high elevation guys, and this is why, you know, Eric at Vokes literally rides, rides a turbo every single day of his life because at 10,000 feet, a stock sled is 30% less power than at sea level. And so he rides a turbo and loves the power of a turbo. And so I, I get that as well. Um, and so again, you know, it, it's based on elevation. It's based on snow conditions. It's based on, um, your type of riding. And again, it just gives us another opportunity to select the right sled for you. I hope that covers it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you could have covered it any better. I mean, it really just... Well, it, it just it, all plays into... Now you're sucking up. Yeah, like. right. It really just plays into what you're doing, though. I mean, when we had that 900 shoot, though, it was deep. Oh, man. It was deep. Like, well, that was one of the deepest days I think I've ever ridden. Yep. It was deep. Well, and I think to, <laughs> to your point, Blake, yep. and this is, <laughs> this is where I am so fortunate. Um, I do have the ability to have multiple snowmobiles. Right. And so on that day, what would I have taken? Of course, without question, dude, it was literally, we, I couldn't go up anything. It was <laughs> so deep. I wrung that 900's neck. I was, I was pinned the entire day, all day, going nowhere. All day. Right. Yep. I would have loved to have my boost sled, yep. but that was our shoot day. And I'm so. glad you didn't have the boost sled because <laughs> there's no way I could have got where you were going. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, and so, you know, I'm, I, I, on that day and again it just brought me back to the same conversation like you know this is the day that like a lot of people i don't take this the wrong way i, I call them snow snobs right like ah, the, let's go anywhere snow there's nothing even out there worth riding well i don't ever think that and you know i ride no matter what the conditions are um but on that day like if i, I would have rather they rode a boost sled uh, like a hundred percent. Right. I mean, it would have, right. You just would have laughed all day and made things that were really hard on the 900 be really easy. That is true. So, good point. All right. What's our next one? Okay. So how does the Carl's 900 compare to the nine R? Ah, this is the question. Sweet. Um, and you know, I, just because I had a lot of these questions, my answer was very short, but I'll be able to talk about it a little bit more, um, here. So, the 900 Carl's versus the 900 uh, or the 9R, they are very similar. And they are very similar because um, a lot of the development um, for both packages were in conjunction with each other. Um, Carl's cycle, as, as you guys may know, they have a very long standing relationship with Polaris. Uh, Jack from Carl's uh, was. Um, a world-class racer for Polaris back in the day. Um, he is like, uh, don't quote me on that. Well, I'll just say he is like one of the top uh, retail dealers in the nation. Um, maybe the, the number one, I, I don't know, but they sell a lot of sleds. They're a diehard Polaris customer. And so, you know, they've worked together both from the R&D side of things, racing and all of that for, for many years. And so, um, you know, it's it's... The Carl's is based a lot off of the 9R, and the 9R is based off of the Carl's. Um, you know, I will say there's a, there's a couple things that I notice. Um, like a, a Carl's kit and a 9R 
I even feel that the 9R has a little bit more response because of, A, we have a map dedicated to the 9R uh, from a fueling standpoint, and we also do have the 650 crank. Now, my like my personal 900 that is case ported, lightweight rotating stuff, all that, I would say like I my sled has a bit more response than the, than the 9R at my elevation, but that's purely because I've literally done every single thing. It's hand ported, all of this stuff. But I think that's the biggest thing that you're going to feel when you jump on a 9R is like, holy cow, dude, this like throatiness on the bottom and that torque is pretty addicting. And so from a horsepower standpoint, I would say they are really, really close, very similar. Um, and what's awesome about it, you know, a Carl's kit, when it's all said and done, um, you know, you do clutching and a silencer and everything, you're like 4,200 bucks. Um, you know, where you get to buy one from the factory now. That's, with a warranty. With a warranty that's already done. So what's the deal too with uh, the 650 crank? Yeah. So, um, so that's, um, and this has been cool. I've been, I've had the opportunity to do this, um, for, for quite a few years of, you know, um, the 850 crank is, um, like a lot beefier, a lot bigger than the previous 800 crank. And that's something that you can really feel, um, to be honest. It's funny when I get back on an 800, it's like, dang, dude, this thing is so fun. Like just the chassis feels lighter, it's rippier and all of that stuff. And that it is because the crankshaft is a lot lighter. Now the 650 crank isn't a ton lighter than the, eight, uh, the 850. It's like four tenths of a pound, I believe. But that again is rotating weight and that still makes a big difference. And it's something that you feel for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, um, and let me, let me just, uh, kind of reiterate, oh, cause this will go into the next question. The next question is what primary clutch is on the, um, the nine, the nine R. And so it is, uh, really cool that they, they, uh, uh, put the P22. So the P22 is the new primary clutch that, um, came on the boost sled this year. Um, and again, it has, it's that some of that tech. A lot of that technology came from the razor world, um, where it has a basically a bearing um, in the clutch that allows the sled to um, basically keep proper belt. So there is no more belt deflection adjustment. It has a, a bearing in there that spins, and so the the belt is always riding in the perfect position back in the secondary. So and what's cool about that clutch also is that clutch was about a pound lighter than the the P85 that we've all uh, ran over the you know the course of the 800 and 850. Um, so pretty cool that they so another pound of rotating weight, lightweight flywheel, lightweight crankshaft, pistons, um, you know, um, matched porting, a matched Y pipe. It's really why it's like when you guys hear like my Carl's 900 and just how pissed off that sounds. Well, the videos you guys have heard of me on the 9 are like, they're like, that's not stock. I'm like, it's stock. <laughs> like that's, that's the way it comes. Um, I do have a diamond S silencer on mine, but that's because I need to cook my lunch and, and you know, I'm putting the silencer on every sled I ride because I want the weight loss and the performance. So, um, so that's it. Sweet. Um, Outlaw twins for the 900. As soon as, as soon as the nine R dropped, they were like, when are we getting twins? When are we getting twins? Yeah. <laughs> and I, and that's awesome. I mean, I, I love to see the resurgence of twins. Um, I've, we've had the 850 matrix stuff, uh, has been a lot of fun with twins. They, you know, the, the nostalgia of, of the sound and the performance and everything has been um, a lot of fun. I know SLP has been licking their chops since they um, discovered that the nine is coming out. Um, so um, from a chassis standpoint, um, you know, every, everything as far as I know is, is the same. So from a fitment standpoint, I think we're going to be really good there. Um, now it'll just be the work of getting things tuned and, and, uh, and dialed in. So uh Man, that's going to be a fun combo, huh? Nine, that 850 nine, with twins rips pretty good. It does. Uh, the 850 with twins was a rocket ship. The 900 with twins is going to be, um, yeah, even even that much better. So, um, yeah. And I, I saw one of the questions, too, this kind of relates into that is, you know, are silencers from our 850s going to work on the 900? 
Um, I am, I, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I know I took the 850 diamond S silencer off of one of my sleds and put it on my 900 and, um, and I'm running it, but I don't know if there are going to be changes there. So that's a question I don't know. Um, but to be determined. Yeah, it's to be determined, but I will yeah. say my um, my 900 runs really good with the Diamond S on it right now. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, are they going to keep making the 850? Yeah, that, and that's a good question. We're they're they're making lot. Uh, there's going to be lots of 850s next year. Um, the 850 is uh, an incredible platform, and uh, you know, obviously, from a cost standpoint, you look at um, you have you now have three different options, right? You have an 850, you have the 9R, and then you got Boost. And so, again, the 850 is uh, more machine than most people need. Um, it's funny, as I've spent a lot of time on the 650, I just keep saying, I'm like, dude, there are so many people, especially with a little lower elevation, that would just have an absolute ball and be better riders on the 650. So there's really like four motor options, right? I mean, for, for mountain guys. Um, 650 850 900 and um and boost and what's and and again i think you know what we saw this year is the freaking puffed out chest freaking testosterone uh alpha <laughs> whatever you want to say mentality of I am ordering a boost and I'm getting the biggest, baddest sled. And then, you know, all these people, like a lot of people who showed up this year, I'm like, how are you liking your boost? They're like, this thing's way more machine than I need. I'm like, I know. Yeah. I, I it, it can get you into trouble as equally as it can get you out of trouble. Well, what happens is when you, you know, when, when you ride a boost sled hesit hesitantly, it will punish you so <laughs> yeah. bad. You get behind the seat. You're you're not. You know your your plan B is way too late. It's like wheeling over backwards. It's all this stuff where like, dude, if you were on a stock sled, you wouldn't have got stuck right there. You could at least pull yourself back up. Just done something, oh, right? Yeah, like, right. so again, I I think it's awesome that we have even more choices to be able to put the right sled um, in your hands. Even that 650, to be honest, that thing is a beast. I mean, I started on a 600 because that when when I started, they had an 800 and a 600. You mm -hmm. know, um, but yeah, that 600, that 650, freaking yeah. rips. Like you go out on that 146 and just do ash drills like they're going out of style, man. Yeah. Well, what was interesting uh, when we had the 600s and 800s, the 600, to be honest, didn't. Like at my elevation, it didn't run very well from a calibration standpoint. Um, the, the top end was good. The bottom end was just terrible. Um, and the 650 is the exact opposite. The bottom end is just so crisp and fun. Um, the 650 top end, I would say, is comparable to an 800 on top end. So you're kind of getting best the best of both worlds, but the sled just feels light and it's easy to ride. Um, so that's kind of, um, you know, that's, that's what I see there. With uh, with doing all the you know clutch tweaks and stuff like that, what's what what RPM are we looking for on that nine R? Yeah, and I need to. I saw that question and I'm like, you know what? I actually don't know the answer to that. But I will say, just from riding it, this sled feels really good at that 83 to 8400, and it might be still like you know on an 850 stock 850 that 8250 8300 is right like that prime spot um players may still be recommending that that same rpm range but i will say from the seat of the pants and riding it that 8384 so just a, a tick more which which kind of makes more sense um it's there's more airflow there's um you know it's, it acts like a kind of a ported motor and and all this stuff so a little higher rpm um is something that i have definitely seen um that eight at uh, 8400 that thing is she's screaming hold on bud <laughs> we're going we're going up the last one that we got we getting a triple in the future. Oh, everybody wants the triple. You well, keep bringing back the classic and getting everybody stoked. Out. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about the triples. And here's here's the the you know it's it's kind of it makes me snicker um, about the the question. Like, well, pretty pissed off. They they still keep ignoring us on this trip. It'd be really cool to bring back that triple in a mountain sled. I'm like, dude, that'd be the stupidest thing ever, ever. I mean, you can't, like, we have done so much work to make these sleds light and fun and nimble and easy to ride. And now you want to go and screw that all up by putting something that, just because it sounds cool. 
If you want something that sounds cool, go put a freaking set of Outlaw Twins on something, and then you can have your sound too, okay? Um, I love the triples. Um, as you guys have seen uh, this year, um, I got to, um, you know, I, I I love the classics. I mean, just to, to be able to, you know, revisit those memories of me growing up and, you know, my very first sled I ever bought with my own money was a 1990 Indy 500. I still have that sled. My first sled I ever snow checked was a 96 XLT RMK. It was pretty cool. I ended up getting uh, an XLT this year. Pretty cool backstory on that sled, which we'll talk about in, in another um, discussion. But, you know, so uh, Malcolm Smith, uh, MSR Racing, like, the, one of the greatest dirt bikers of all time. Um, I actually ended up uh, um, just buying his, it was his XLT that he had. Um, so it's a 94, ended up cleaning it all up. And um, pretty cool to think, to know where that snowmobile has been and the history of that snowmobile. And then, you know, I got an 89 uh, Indy 650 with some triples. And then the big dog right behind me back here, the 01 with a 680 ultra motor based <laughs> bored out to a thousand makes nine million horsepower <laughs> i love i love the triples but they, they have a time and a place and that is not in um the current type of mountain riding that we had so all you guys who want triples and a new chassis just stop it just quit um i mean it's a cool pipe dream but it would be horrendous to ride um so um let's just be happy that we have lightweight 900 big bores and boost sleds and 850s and 650s okay all right i think that's all we got well, um, you know, I, we thought this would be a good podcast. It's kind of a little bit shorter. Um, I think we touched base on a lot of the questions that people have. Um, and so, you know, just, just remember, um, you know, when, when you're thinking about buying a sled or ordering a sled, um, you know, don't, don't do it based off of just because you think bigger is better. Like really analyze what you know, what your goals are as a rider. Um, and, and that will really help you, you know, because with more options, it's two different things with more options. It gives you the opportunity to, um, and I'll, I will tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got a story about this. What, what I'm saying is with more options, it gives you more opportunity to pick the right sled or pick the wrong sled. And it's funny. So as I'm thinking about that, right, I'm like thinking, okay, you, you got 650, 850, 900 boost. And then all these different configurations between pro and chaos. Maybe I'll talk about that too, pro and chaos real quick. Um, but going back, so in 96, right? 96, let's see here. I was working at Sun Honda down in Denver. I was this like punk kid working in the parts department trying to help sell snowmobiles because i actually knew something about them i was working two jobs i was working at uh actually i was working yeah two jobs i was working at the bowling alley at night i was working at the dealership um on like after school and on the weekends just so i could pay for my snowmobile and um so 96 i go to snow check my first sled and i had just got off of my so I had a 90 Indy 500 and I loved that 500. I loved like to be able to get it somewhere. I had to be able to ride it, like hold it pinned and all this stuff. And so I went to go snow. I snow checked my, uh, uh, 96, uh, Indy 500. And it's funny that was actually in the evolution chassis, which that sled wasn't going to be available till, till late. And so my, they ended up saying, hey, this sled's going to be late. Do you want to snow check something else? So then I, you know, get the brochure out and I start looking and I'm like, okay, so the next sled up was a 96 XLT. But then I'm like, whoa, look at this ultra. Whoa, an ultra 680. Well, hell, if I'm going, if I'm getting a 680, I might as well get the storm. I mean, the storm's the next one. And dude, I'm like a buck 20 right <laughs> at that at that time, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm this little. And so, you know, even at that age, I'm like, well, if I'm going to order that one. I might as well just go big and go big or go home, right? Yep. Thankfully, I just got the XLT and um, 
you know, put triple pipes and all that, all that stuff because I needed that, right, to become a better rider. No, I didn't, but I wanted it. So pick the right sled for you um, is the point. Um, let's talk about just real quick because there were some stuff uh, chassis-wise, which is really cool, configuration-wise. We now have, um, you know, in the boost, you can get like, a bunch of different configurations now, which is good. Uh, you know, you have Pro and Chaos and 155 and 165 and all that stuff. And, again, it's the same question I get. What should I what should I get in a in a boost sled? Should I get the chaos or the pro? Quit no I'm sorry, I'm not being mean, but don't ask me what you should get. Okay? Um I here's what I will say to that. I will give the get, I want I'm going to give you the information and then you make the decision. I don't want to I don't want to build the sled for you. You build the sled for you. Okay. But I ride a pro because of the terrain I ride. You guys heard me describe in the beginning of this podcast what I look for to like keep me advancing as a rider. I look for the most ridiculous, stupid stuff that no one would ever go ride in. And that's the definition of what a pro is ready for and capable of. Now, for more open terrain and even... And, and not even less steep. I mean, a chaos, you can go get some the job done with a chaos in just about any terrain. Um, you just have to, you know, be smarter and ride it more aggressive and all of that stuff. But, you know, again, if you want a more of a light feeling front end, buy a chaos. If you want something that's a little more planted, predictable, stable, and more technical terrain, buy a pro. It's, it's that simple. It really is. Like, what, what do you do 80% of the time? Well, I am in a little more Oprah stuff. I'm trying to get into the more technical stuff, but you know, I, I'm right now. I'm at the level where I like to be in stuff that is more manageable. Okay, cool. Chaos is a sweet sled, but a pro is also uh, you know more stable and predictable, and will help you push into that other stuff. So again, take a step back. Don't buy off of you know what other people are buying. Buy off of what you want to do. Um, and Polaris is really cool giving everyone the opportunity to really pick the perfect sled for you. We know that Miana Chaos does not go well. <laughs> Freaking Blake. <laughs> First time we talked about this. Like, you show up in a Tundra with a Skidoo in the back. I'm like, uh-huh. well, this isn't going to go very good. <laughs> and so, and then, you know, I'm like, all right, dude, let's go film. What, what sled do you want? He's like, well, um... How about that 155 chaos over there? I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Go had to give her a try. Go ride that sled. And it was a deep. That sled rode me, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was not good. It was a deep day. And like literally first line, you're like, okay, I, I know what you're talking about now. I'm like, get on a freaking pro or a 65 or something. The pro has been treating me real good. Yeah. It's, a, it's an awesome sled. Yeah. So, and again, you're trying to chase me around. You need exactly. all the help yeah, you can I, get. I right? need all the climb I can get. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, well guys, I hope this helped. Um, you know, obviously um, we're just trying to educate you the most we can. And um, there will be from between now and the end of snow check, we'll be doing a bunch more content and videos about um, all the, all the choices and options that you have. But in the meantime, take a, take a listen to the podcast. We'll have this up on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all the fun stuff. Um, share it with your buddies who have the same questions. And uh, until next time we will, uh, yeah, we got to get Kyle back on here, have him talk about Afton. It'll be a fun one. He's going to come in here with his head down, but you can't. Like, those guys, like the Keith Curtises, Andy Thomases, Justin Thomases, like, name any of them. Shepard, Peters, I mean, all of those guys. It's what they do. It's no different than those guys coming into uh, our world and saying, damn, boys, you uh, – you know what you're doing here. Well, it's because we do it every day. And it's no different that they're doing it every day as well. So it'll be fun to hear him. Um, he learned a lot, I know. Um, and it's always good. Um, it's good getting um, lessons. You know, we don't call them mistakes or, you know, we, we call them lessons. And so uh, it'll be fun to talk about that with Kyle maybe next go around. So, all right, guys. Thanks. Cool. Thank you.